I'm Deacon Frederick Bartels. Is Jesus divine? Is he God or merely a good moral teacher? Newsweek recently reported that a survey conducted by Lifeway Research found that 52% of Americans no longer believe in Jesus' divinity. They think he was a good moral teacher, but not God. The survey polled a nationally representative sample of about 3,000 adults. Given that 77% of Americans claim to be Christian, the findings of this survey might come as a surprise. They might be disturbing. And it's true to say that the results of surveys are often ambiguous due to several factors. On the other hand, it's not difficult to understand how this has happened when we consider the aggressive attacks from modernists and secular humanists against the church and the Christian religion over the past couple of centuries. When people hear the words modernist and modernism, they often think of different things in terms of their meanings. The Catholic opposition to modernism doesn't mean Catholics are against everything that can be considered modern, such as technology and modern ways of living, like driving cars, watching movies, and using smartphones. In a theological and philosophical sense, modernism means something different. Modernism is a heresy that attacks Christian dogmas and truths by gradually introducing distortions and corruptions. Over time, the foundational principles of dogmas and doctrines are eroded away, discarded, and replaced with new evolutionary and revolutionary ideas that cannot be said to be an authentic development of doctrine. Modernism is like a cancer that eats away at the body of Christ. Pope Pius X noted in Pacindi Dominici Gregis that modernism is the synthesis of all heresies. He wrote, Were one to attempt the task of collecting together all the errors that have been broached against the faith and to concentrate the sap and substance of them all into one, he could not better succeed than the modernists have done. In an informal sense, Heresy can be defined as deliberately letting go of one side of the tension found in a particular theological truth. In our discussion here, modernists let go of Jesus' divinity, but hold on to his humanity. Thus, he becomes a good moral teacher and nothing else. This suits their ends because if Jesus is merely a good moral teacher and not God, there's no reason to pay him any particular attention. There are plenty of moral teachers. Why should we need another one, especially one who was crucified as a criminal? If Jesus is not divine, then the divine faith of the church rests on a lie and everything crumbles, which is the whole point of the modernist enterprise. Consider also that if Jesus is not divine, humankind is unredeemed and men are unsaved. Man is redeemed precisely because the Son of God became man and offered himself up on the cross to God the Father in expiation of sin. Furthermore, salvation is made possible for men by virtue of the eternal Word made flesh. In becoming man, the Son of God makes a marriage of humankind with God. His voluntary death on the cross is a saving death that opens the heavens up before us, provided that we have faith in him and receive the sacrament of baptism, which is the normative means of salvation by virtue of configuring us to Christ. The tension between Jesus' divinity and humanity must be maintained. It's disastrous to overemphasize one of his natures at the cost of the other. The Lord Jesus is true God and true man. He is perfectly God and perfectly man. Jesus is the incarnate Son of God who conceived in the flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary by the Holy Spirit, assumed an individual human nature to his divine person. Christ is the second person of the Holy Trinity who perfectly possesses a human nature and is therefore the Word made flesh, fully God and fully man. There are many examples found in the New Testament that point to the divinity of Jesus. John's Gospel alone has several. One of my favorites is in chapter 8. While speaking to some of the Jews who want to kill him, Jesus makes a statement that leads them to think he has seen Abraham. Questioning Jesus about this, they say, You are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus answers, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, 
I am. Jesus' I am statement echoes back to Moses' encounter with God at the burning bush. There, God reveals his name, saying, I am who I am. The Jews listening to Jesus knew full well that he was putting himself on equal terms with God. Consequently, they intended to stone him to death for blasphemy. Jesus is not merely a good moral teacher. In his book, Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis gave an excellent argument against that nonsensical idea. The heart of his argument consists in this piece of logic. If Jesus is not God, then he was either a liar or a lunatic. If he was a liar, he most certainly could not have been a good moral teacher. If he was a lunatic, then we cannot trust anything he said. Thus, according to Lewis, Jesus must be either Lord, liar, or lunatic. Those are your choices. While it's true that we cannot prove in a scientific way that Jesus is God because divine and spiritual realities are beyond the scope of the physical sciences, the evidence in favor of his divinity is extensive. Nevertheless, it's only through the eyes of faith that Christ is unveiled in all his truth, beauty, goodness, and splendor. In faith, he is revealed as God and man. The virtue of faith is a gift from God, enabling us to unreservedly and freely assent with intellect and will to all that God has revealed in Christ, transmitted in its full purity through the Catholic Church. Faith cannot be earned. No amount of study in and of itself will produce it or result in passing the test of faith. Faith is accessed as a free gift through prayer, repentance, and humility before God. One must sincerely seek it and entreat God for it then one must nourish and protect it daily. Unfortunately, Christians who disbelieve in Jesus' divinity lack the theological virtue of faith because it flows from the divine person of Christ himself. One cannot have faith in Christ in a full sense, yet also deny his divine nature. The two are incompatible. Anyone who may have been a Christian in the past, who holds to the heresy that Jesus is merely a good moral teacher, has lost the truth. They've forfeited their identity as disciples of Christ. For these former Christians, the modernists have perhaps destroyed their faith, yet it's difficult to imagine how they could have done so without their cooperation, at least to some degree. Let us pray for all Christians and their unity, that they may profess the true and divine faith of the Church. Jesus Christ is Lord. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Thank you. Vivatis in Christo.